Good morning, good morning, good morning. <clears throat> the meeting. There we go. There we go. So uh, I'm going to ask you guys, if you can, to mute yourself just for the clarity of the connection. Then we get everybody mute except uh, obviously me and uh, Kel for a minute. You're welcome to uh, wave uh, your hand if you want to ask a question. But we also have this little uh, chat box that people are using very friendly. It looks like people know how to do that very well already. Um, I am going to, Brett, if you don't mind, buddy, can you mute? It just, I'd love to see you guys, but if you're on mute, it will be better. There we go. Okay, technically, we're going to start this meeting. We're going to have Cal. There we go. So, uh, good morning, everyone. This is... Uh, Bruno Laclotte, uh, I'm a uh, Regency Wine in Nevada and uh, also Hillside Wine in Spirit in California. We're very pleased to have you again this morning for this uh, amazing uh, uh, little section that we do every other week with the winemaker as a special guest. Uh, I want to thank everyone to be a part of this meeting again to support the program and to share the champion, the breakfast of the champion. Uh, I am very pleased to have my dear friend, uh, Kel Anderson, online with us. He's right there in a, on the property at the Hyde Vineyard in Carneros. He's going to uh, tell us about his project. He's going to tell us about his background. He's going to tell us about, uh, obviously, uh, this ph philosophy, how he's making those wines and how he's making it. Uh, he's going to tell us about the terroir as well, where he defined those uh, different grapes and how he defined to make the special cuvée. Um, it is just a beautiful morning, it looks like over there. So uh, thank you so much, Kel, to be a part of this uh, great event this morning to, uh, to uh, give us and to share the passion with us. Um, everybody have a Hyde Vineyard on the front of them and also do have the State Goat uh, blend that we distribute to everyone. This is the tradition. We're going to raise a glass this morning uh, we're going to raise a glass to the industry. We're going to raise the glass to the people uh, keeping strong and uh, we're going to keep safe and we're going to go through this and we together are going to uh, try to uh, reinvent the industry as we are doing right now. So cheers to everyone to, uh, to be part of this event. I really, really thank you on the bottom of my heart to be uh, supporting the program and welcome to Monsieur Cal Anderson. I will say Thanks. Monsieur because I'm very... Uh, we know each other now for uh, many years and um, I always um, admire about what you're doing and the passion that you bring over to the glass. So welcome to our little uh, trade uh, testing show. Um, thank you, Kel, to be here. Please tell us and introduce yourself and tell us uh, a little more about you. Cheers. Sure. Thanks so much, uh, Bruno, for having me. And um, thank you for uh, supporting my wines in uh, California and Nevada. Um, it's been a great uh, relationship, and uh, even in these tough times, uh, uh, we can do cool, fun things like this. Like, uh, you know, we I didn't even know what a Zoom was, uh, you know, nine months ago. <laughs> but uh, here we are, and uh, you're all um, sitting on my tailgate with me uh, in the Hyde Vineyard. Um, nice. Yeah, so um, it's pretty cool. I'm, uh, you know, it's, it's it. it you know, I, I would love for you guys to come visit me and uh, me to come visit you. But uh, obviously, this is as good as it gets. So it's not bad. Uh, you know, we picked a good morning to be here at uh, Hyde Vineyard. Um, it's going nice. to be pretty fun. Um, you know, I'll tell you a little bit about myself, a little bit about the wine. Um, Chris Hyde uh, might be walking his dog. Uh, he lives right down the road over here. Um, I'm going to uh, flip my uh, uh, phone around. So uh, here you guys are on my tailgate. Uh, you can see a uh, really high tech. Uh, <laughs> Good and, job. Uh, we're looking at the, this is the old um, Hyde uh, farmstead right here. So uh, the original, this is the original property um, that um, the Hyde family purchased uh, when they came to the Napa Valley. Um, uh, oh gosh, it's almost 50 years ago now. Um, and um, 
yeah, this is, uh, whoop, let's see. Can you see me? I think so. Yeah, yeah. I will. I'm trying to share. I'm sharing the map. Oh, with sure. Everyone just to be sure that they know where we are. So we're obviously in California. We're not, we're in Napa. And right here in Carneros on the tip yes. or north, uh, just the limit of the city of Napa Valley, you have the uh, Hyde Vineyard, if I, if I may, uh, may say, right here. So everybody see that? All good? Right there, you know, it's that's perfect. Uh, so yeah, we're at the very northern end of uh, Carneros. Um, you know, Carneros being one of the coolest uh, appellations in the in in Napa. Um, you know, uh, towards the south end, it's you know very flat and you know a lot of clay soils. Um, up here at Hyde Vineyard, uh, you can see it's it's rocky, it's uh, it's hilly. Um, I'll uh, let me see if I can uh, zoom in over here. There we go. Um, you know, it's very hilly, very rocky. Uh, that's uh, Chris's house uh, uh, down there at the south end of the property. And our Syrah um, is right here. So I've been purchasing, um, you know, this Syrah right next to the original homestead uh, since 2016. And uh, you can see, um, you know, uh, Chris has already taken the crew through, done all the uh, seeding here. So he's already... Uh, done all the winter seeding for the cover crop right here. Um, everything is uh, is pruned. I'm going to zoom in. These are old vines, um, old gnarly vines, and uh, you know head trained. Uh, we we just got the um, um, the canes uh, placed for next year. Uh, we got the replacements right here. Uh, here's the wood for next year uh, to grow up into the canopy, up into the wires. So. Uh, all the prunings are thrown uh, into the adjoining rows. So what he's doing is he's doing the seeding, winter seeding in these rows, throwing the uh, prunings in the other adjacent row, and he's going to run the uh, disc through and disc it in. Uh, you know, their uh, practice sustainable and uh, organic and biodynamic in certain parts of the vineyard. Um, you can see the, the crew out there doing uh, some more pruning out in the Chardonnay, um, a little bit out in the distance there. So. Um, yeah, it's a, it's, this is a cool time of year uh, to be uh, out in the vineyard. It's not, uh, there's still a lot of work to do, um, even though all the fruit is harvested. Um, so this is a special, special place. Um, you know, I really wanted uh, to, um, you know, make wine uh, with Chris Hyde. I've known Chris for over 15, almost 20 years now. Nice. Um, I was working with them for a long time, uh, you know, with Paul Meyer uh, sourcing some Chardonnay uh, when I was the uh, director of winemaking at Paul Meyer. Yeah, let's go uh, back to uh, let's go back to uh, to your journey since uh, obviously you uh, you've been in the wine business now for a while. But tell us how did you start and what is your little story about uh, how you became uh, such a great winemaker? So um, this year was my twentieth vintage. Um, Congratulations. I, uh, yeah, so I, I, I grew up in Sonoma County um, uh, most of my life uh, since I was in first grade and uh, went to high school in Sonoma County. Didn't really know a whole lot about wine, but uh, when I went to UC Davis as a pre-med student, um, I took a uh, some introductory classes w while I was at UC Davis and I got bit by the wine bug and um, it was a tasting Rones Around the World that got me interested uh, that that really uh, th that was the bug that bit me. Uh, it was the Rhone wines. You know, there was a Garnacha from Spain. Uh, you know, Chateau Neuf de Pop. Um, uh, some Saint. There was a Saint Joseph in there. Uh, you know, and some Shiraz from uh, Australia. And it was all you know, brown bag, uh, blind, double blind. And um, that was the first time where I was like, oh wow, like this terroir thing. This this is real. This is this is really cool. Um, so that, 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 that's the, the Roan bug, uh, is what bit me. Um, you know, I graduated from Davis and I, you know, uh, worked at uh, J wine company and Colgan Cellars, um, uh, in the Napa Valley. Uh, then later on at Terra Valentine, um, Cliff Lady Vineyards for eight years. Um, got to work with a lot of amazing mentors, um, uh, uh, Mark O'Bear at Colgan, Andy Erickson at Terra Valentine, Philippe Melka at uh, uh, Cliff Lady. Um, and um, 
at Cliff Lady uh, as the assistant winemaker. Uh, um, I was planning on leaving and taking a head winemaking position somewhere else, uh, but we came to an agreement uh, that I would stay. Uh, and as a bonus, he would let me make my own wine in the back of the cave for one penny per year, as long as I got all of my, you know, permits and whatnot in place. So I started, you know, making five barrels, um, you know, in the back of the cave on my own time, uh, nice. you know, as, a, as, as a bonus in 2008. So that's how kale wines got started. And I decided from the very beginning that kale wines would be a passion project. I'd stick to only Rhone's. Um, and, uh, and that's what it is today. Um, you know, we do red blends, uh, mainly uh, all from Northern California, um, uh, either Napa and Sonoma. Uh, some of them are Grenache based, some of them are Syrah based. The two that we're gonna taste today are Syrah based. Uh, make a rosé out of Grenache and a concrete egg and a little bit of Grenache Blanc as well. So. Tell, um, tell me a little bit, I, I know we want to talk about Kale today, but a lot of people knows you through, obviously, the press, uh, not if it's not from us, because we always talk about you and your uh, excellent wine. But uh, tell us a little bit more about the experience at Paul Meyer. And, uh, oh, oh, sure. So, yeah. uh, you know, I, I started at Paul Meyer. So after being the winemaker at Cliff Lady for, uh, I was there for eight years, last three years as the winemaker. Uh, Jason Paul Meyer approached me about being his director of winemaking in 2011, and uh, and and I decided to uh, yeah I don't know he's a, he's a convincing guy so um, <laughs> I <laughs> I, uh, I decided to join the Paul Meyer team as the director of winemaking, uh, and that's when uh, Kale Wines uh, needed to spread its wings and fly. So but you know we already had you know two vintages uh, one vintage in in um, in bottle and then two in barrel. So uh, Kale Wines was ready to fly and we actually had wine to sell. So it was like, okay, well, this is a good good time to uh, make a change. So I was the director of winemaking at Paul Meyer for five years. 2013, we made uh, the Paul Meyer family their first 100 point wine, uh, which was awesome, the Piece de Resistance. And, um, you know, since then, uh, Paul Meyer has been purchased by Gallo and, uh, uh, you know, it, gone through a lot of changes, but, um, you know, it was an amazing experience, um, you know, it helped me la launch my uh, consulting career as well. So in 2016, started uh, my consulting business, and now I uh, consult for 10 different brands uh, in Napa, Sonoma, uh, as well as Making Kale included, uh, included, obviously, uh, Chateau Potel, VGS, that we talk about, uh, obviously, uh, in a different yep. their Zoom trade testing uh, together. Um, mm -hmm. It's just amazing what you accomplished. How old were, where are you uh, when you did the Palmeyer, the 100 point? Uh, so uh, that m most of that fruit for the Palmeyer 100 point wine, uh, it was a Cabernet. Um, it's mainly from Atlas Peak. Um, and uh, I can see that you actually have a uh, stagecoach in your background, uh, yeah. Bruno. And in fact, um, some of the blocks uh, that the Cabernet came from are right over your right ear uh, on, the, on, the, on the very uh, west side of uh, Atlas Peak on the Stagecoach Vineyard. So, um, yeah, it's, uh, it's a beautiful site. And uh, we'll talk more about the Stagecoach later. But, um, you know, I had a good relationship with the grower there, Jan Krupp. And, um, and he sold me a little bit of Syrah uh, from the same area um you know from the from the mountains so um, how did you feel how did you feel to be named the best one youngest winemaker of the year by some of the magazine uh, what did he bring over to you uh did he change anything in the way you were thinking about making wine did he did yeah, he bring he, over something to your style and to your um uh, to your way to make wine yeah you know i learned so much while i was there um you, you know, uh, it, the, it, Helen Turley was the original winemaker at Paul Meyer. And, you know, in the laboratory, there was still all of her notes on uh, all the wines that she was making, not from not just from Paul Meyer, but from Bryant and some other clients. Anyways, I think she just left a bunch of stuff there. Anyways, uh, you know, uh, it was really interesting. Um, there were uh, stylistic uh, things about, especially like the Paul Meyer Chardonnay, where it was like, okay, you know, Kale, you're you're the winemaker here, but there's a uh, certain kind of parameters, ideas, uh, styles that were uh, that 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 is the Paul Meyer house style, and um, you know, it, it it was just another 
great growth in my career when I, I, I could really learn, uh, uh, you know, uh, the, not just uh, how, but the, the, the why uh, uh, about winemaking. And, you know, now today with a consulting business, um, I feel like I have that knowledge uh, to apply to uh, my other clients as well as my own wines and even my own wines have evolved because of it. Um, Got it. You know, through the years. Can you tell me uh, the different approach that you have with Cabernet Chardonnay, but what we're doing here with Grenache and Syrah? What is the approach? What is the what do you have to emphasize to actually make the wine? It's different. It's different grapes. There are different. Yeah, approaches. yeah. So, so tell me what is what are you doing? So the uh, you know all of our red blends are vineyard designate. So um, even our so the blends so that means the Grenache and the Syrah or the Grenache and the Moved or all of the varieties that. Uh, that blend into the wine are from the same vineyard. So we can vineyard designate blends. Um, and, uh, you know, what we're trying to do is make very different wines. I'm not trying to make the hide like the stagecoach. Uh, I have different um, approaches to making that wine uh, to each of the wines. Um, you know, the, the, the hide is a uh, cooler climate. You know, I'm. Uh, it's so that's uh, what we're testing right now. Let's let's talk about the hide. Very specific sure. about the hide, and and uh, since when you're doing the hide vineyard? Uh, to, uh, 2016 is the first vintage of hide. The first vintage. So yes. what we're having here on the front of us was the first vintage from this vineyard. Yes. Good. Yes. Okay. The very first vintage. Um, you know, and we we're we're still doing it. We just made the 2020 this year. We thought, you know, we might be affected by the fires this year. It wasn't. It's lovely. Uh, so yeah, so so the 16 was the very first, uh, and we've been making it every year since. It's our newest baby in the portfolio. Um, it's cool climate. It's a very different profile uh, than any of the other wines that we're making. Um, you know, it's low in alcohol. Uh, it's got all natural acidity. Um, it naturally has high acidity. These old vines are, you know, are, are very well balanced. Um, you know, we're really only watering these vines uh, uh, prior to heat waves. Um, otherwise, they're dry farmed. Uh, you know, they just don't need it. Um, and, uh, you know, and we're doing quite a bit of whole cluster uh, with a hide as well uh, for the crushing. So, uh, you know, we, we, we basically do 100% whole berry. And then about uh, the 16, we did about 30% whole cluster. Uh, ferment that in a neutral um neutral punchins so we're uh we're basically doing a rotary that's uh 500 liter rotary fermenters um basically big barrels on on spinning racks uh to do the punch downs i'm trying to be you know very reductive i'm trying to maintain a lot of the delicateness of the of the grape and the you know and the floral aspect um uh of, of the wine so very gentle with this particular one, where in contrast, you know, with the stagecoach, I'm trying to do big mountain, uh, fully distemmed extraction, you know, aging in 225 uh, barrels, so regular sized barrels, uh, with, you know, uh, between 33 and 50% new French oak, where I'm, I'm using very little French oak on the, on the hide. Uh, excuse me, very new, new oak, I should say, it's all French, uh, but, uh, about 15% new, I believe, on the hide. So anyways, it's uh, making these wines very differently, trying to highlight the terroir uh, of these different places and make uh, very different wines. So um, this, is the, this is the lightest and the, the most uh, balanced, I believe, in the, in, in the lineup. Okay, so uh, you're testing the wine right now. Uh, tell us uh, if you're if you actually happy with what you're seeing right here. Um, yeah, obviously you know, it's made with 96% Syrah. Uh, you yes. also add a little touch of Viognier. Little, yes, thank you. Uh, I did co-ferment this with a little bit of Viognier, also from a Hyde vineyard. So, like uh, we do a, in uh, Cote Roti. Yes, Cote Roti, like exactly. So, you know, Chris has um, a little bit of Viognier, um, you know, on, on one of his properties. It's not on this property, but, uh, you know, he has about 400 acres uh, not all contiguous, but so the Viognier comes from another uh, uh, block of uh, the Hyde Vineyard. And we, uh, he basically throws it on top of uh, one of the Syrah bins at the very end. 
um, and we co-ferment it, you know, the white with the red, and that's a very traditional thing to do. It does a lot of things for the wine. It, uh, it brings out the aromatics as well as um, uh, aids in the extracting color um, and, uh, and, and further distinguishes the wine, you know, from the other wines in the portfolio. Uh, you know, uh, some really nice, uh, you know, floral characteristics. Right. Um, so I am going to ask someone on the on the on the field, on the on the screen here to actually uh, describe the wine for us, and then we're going to introduce um, obviously Diane, that was very kind in Las Vegas to give it away those cheese to uh, to you guys. You're super super nice, Diane. Thank you so much. So I am going to pick someone, and if someone wants to describe the wine, this is the right time to uh, to wave your hand, guys. Uh, and then we're going to give the world to uh, Diane to tell us why she picked the cheese that you have in the front of you and which cheese and uh, the, the, the food pairing. So does anyone want to take the lead on how to describe this wine here? I think Frédéric is ready. I see his hand waving. So Frédéric is uh, Alexander Steakhouse in Pasadena. He's a lucky guy to be in Pasadena because we all know uh -huh. that Pasadena is not closed like... Uh, LA County, so he's telling me that he's actually very busy. But thank you so much, Frédéric, uh, to be part of this uh, Breakfast of the Champion again. Thank you. Tell us uh, what you think about this wine. Good morning, everybody. And uh, yes, maybe uh, Monday we are all in vacation too. <laughs> the, the ICU number are going to talk to us about it. Um, wow. Uh, Kel, congratulations. What a career. And uh, yes, I'm very inspired by the man. I like uh, the place where he went. And I do like the wine. Uh, this is very Rhone Valley, but it's not underripe. Like uh, uh, it is not showing uh, the Rhone Valley gamey. The, the nose is open. It's a 16, but the, the wine is expressive. It's a beautiful balance. We got the, the authentic character of the Syrah because the pick was made at the right time. It's not overripe. It's not underripe. Um, it got a beautiful structure. The wine is going to go in time because the acidity is there. And I believe that's why he wanted to make something as Rhone Valley as possible. And uh, for people that really like Syrah, wow. Uh, like we say in France, sur le cul. It's, uh, <laughs> it's, and to translate that expression to America, it would be spot on. <laughs> yeah, here we go. <laughs> Thank you, uh, Frederica. <laughs> At your, uh, at your place at the steakhouse, uh, at the Alexander Steakhouse, so just pick one dish, uh, then, then this one will work very well with. Well, I think uh, any of uh, the, the two large cuts that are dry age, the porterhouse or the Flannery ribeye chop, that'd be, that'd be amazing. The problem is America is very uneducated about Syrah. It's very tough to sell them Syrah unless you have it by the glass and it's like you stick their nose into the peepee. -pee. You give them a sample <laughs> and you tell them, hey, this is named Syrah. I know you don't know about it, but please try it. I have it by the glass. Oh, wow, it's wonderful. Yes, it is. And you should know about it. Nice, great. Well, let's, uh, let's all work on that for sure. I'm always amazed and uh, Syrah never been a attraction in the market, but I believe the potential of Syrah is just amazing. I used to represent Saxum a long time ago, and we decided to actually uh, not put any grapes names on the label. And we all know what Saxum became and how successful it is. And uh, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to do the same thing with Kel because I really believe what he's doing is just amazing. Uh, thank you, Frédéric, for this little note on the food pairing. Uh, talking about food pairing, we're going to go to, uh, to Diane. Diane, uh, thank you so much again to be a uh, part of this event again this morning. You are our buddy, she's in uh, Las Vegas. Tell us about your location. Tell us about you think about uh, why you pick this, uh, this specific cheese. Tell us the cheese uh, component and tell sure. us why you pick this cheese for this, uh, for this uh, special event this morning. Thank you again. Yeah, you bet. Thanks for having me. Um, as you mentioned, I'm Diana. Um, I own Valley Cheese and Wine here in Henderson, um, just over on Horizon Ridge in the McDonald Ranch area. Um, just took ownership July 27th, still a family owned business. So mom and dad are here with me. Um, I'm one of 45 certified cheese sensory evaluators in the country. 
and the only one in Las Vegas. So my palate is certified to narrate and evaluate flavor profiles of cheeses. Um, I'm also a certified cheese professional, an artisan cheesemaker, and an affineur and cheesemonger. Wow. So I have a lot of like cheese based experience. Um, I moved to Oregon. <laughs> <laughs> There's a lot going on with cheese in my brain. Um, <laughs> but I thought um, I had these wines brought to me yesterday and got an opportunity to taste them and was really, really like pleasantly surprised at how nicely balanced they are and how fun they are and a, a nice representation of California wines. I'm still learning wines. I There really is only just cheese in my brain. So all I'm really good for is telling you what I think will go well with it. Um, and I wanted to stick to California domestically produced cheeses, specifically Northern California cheeses. Um, so I paired the first with the 2016 with Humboldt Fog. Um, I got a lot of like deep ripe berries um, and ripe fruit notes from the 2016. Forgive me if I'm totally off because I'm like I said, I'm still learning wine. That's okay. Um, but um, I, and for me, my brain went immediately to goat cheese. Um, I felt like goat cheese and berries is a very classic pairing um, with how smooth the wine is. It really, it really nicely balances the, um, the proteolytic activity, the nice cream line that you see on the Humboldt fog. Um, and then you like nice, nice tart brightness towards the center. So as this is a soft ripened cheese, it's gonna have like a nice sort of like vegetal rind and then nice cream line under the rind that's gonna give you a little bit more of that like cultured cream note, a little bit of but a buttery undertone, get m like more forward into the paste and you'll get this bright tart citrusy tone, um, very classic of a goat's milk cheese. So I figured it would be a really nice sort of um, complementary pairing to what we've got going on. So that's how I, I do have to try this cheese. I'm sorry, guys. I went to the store this morning and my friend actually picked it up one of this gold cheese with the right description. Not exactly what you have in Vegas, but I did have to test the wine uh, with this uh, beautiful pairing that you put all together for us. Again, thank you. And a few people are asking uh, the name of the store. Yes, it's Valley Cheese and Wine. Uh, gave us the address again for the people in Las Vegas. Sure, it's 1570 West Horizon Ridge Parkway. I'll type it in the chat for everybody. Beautiful, superb. But thank you again. We'll, we'll uh, stay tuned because we have a second one and we have a second cheese with you. So stay tuned. We you will bet. definitely uh, um, uh, talk to you again on, on that. And I hope uh, then you actually uh, enjoy the wine as well. Let's, sure. Uh, yeah, let's, let's, to learn, it. let's learn about wine together. That's what that's what we do. Please, I'm happy to learn about wine. <laughs> and I'm oh, happy we're happy to learn about your cheese. Thank you again. <laughs> Appreciate that. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, Kel, you don't have the cheese, and I know then, uh, then I really hope that one of these days, very, very soon, that we will share more wine and more cheese together. Uh, let's move to the, uh, uh, the other uh, project, which is a second bottle of wine. Uh, let's uh, open up, everyone. Let's go to the next uh, sample, which is the uh, State's Goat. Uh, and tell us, uh, Kel, please tell us about the estate gauge, why you pick this, uh, this, uh, these grapes over there. I, I didn't <laughs> know until I met you that actually stage gauge did have yeah. Grenache and Syrah on the property, which I was really surprised about. And um, I'm very pleased that we actually do have that in our portfolio. But also, then you're giving us some allocation on those one because you all need to understand and uh, Chaos making very, very small batch of those cuvées, so they are very limited and uh, we get allocation here at Hillside Wine and Spirit and Regency uh, every year now. So uh, thank you again to give us access to those wines. Okay. Tell us about, uh, Kel, about uh, uh, Stagecoach. Sure. So Stagecoach is, uh, you know, I would consider it, uh, you know, Grand Cru Napa uh, for Cabernet. You know, there's the Tokolon Vineyard, uh, you know, uh, you could speak about, uh, you know, uh, a bunch of vineyards in Napa, but I, I would consider Stagecoach a, a, a Grand Cru level uh, vineyard. It's, it's a large, uh, big contiguous vineyard. You can see it behind Bruno. It's uh, about 400 acres um, and it's mainly Cabernet Sauvignon. Now, um, there is um quite a bit oh there i see uh bruno's pulling up um the map here atlas peak is uh, defined by its uh high elevation um it is in the hills uh above um stag's leap district um you know uh it, and it is super rocky it's almost like a high desert up there 
um, really, really rocky, really, really uh, dark red soils. Um, it looks like uh, it looks like Mars up there. It's uh, it's really wild, um, and it, uh, it and uh, you know the um, uh, all, all the wines up there are extremely intense, uh, extremely small berries. Uh, they don't they don't have a lot of uh, uh, soil. They don't have a lot of wa uh, water, so uh, naturally well balanced. Now um, uh, the uh, block of Syrah and Grenache that I get um, from the Stagecoach Vineyard is on the very very western edge which is, uh, it's still uh, technically, it, it, technically it's, it's out of the Atlas Peak uh, AVA um, and it's right next to Pritchard Hill. So, um, you know, from the block, you can see uh, Continuum Winery and Colgan and, um, and those people on the very Northern side of uh, Pritchard Hill. So it, the soils are much more like Pritchard Hill than uh, Atlas Peak, you know, much, much redder soils. Um, and there's a little bit of Syrah and Grenache planted over there, uh, both uh, Albin clone Syrah, Albin clone Grenache. Um, I was lucky enough to get my hands on them in uh, 2012. Um, I, w I shared the block with uh, Helen Keplinger um, and, uh, and Aaron Pott. So, um, you know, we share those two blocks. Um, you know, for we shared those two blocks for years. Uh, uh, it, ma it makes amazing wine. It makes extremely dark and concentrated uh, Syrah. I, and you know, uh, I'm trying to make all of these Syrahs very different than one another. Um, I'm making this uh, a lot more like a, a Napa Cabernet. Uh, uh, you know, that's why we put it in. You know, the the black label. Uh, that's why we use a little bit more oak. Um, you know, it does really well as a big extracted wine. And we like to think of this wine as uh, the, the cab lovers uh, Syrah. I, I, we feel like they, uh, we, we like to uh, put this wine in front of people and say, you know, like, you know, how do you, how do you like, uh, or, you know, uh, how do you like this wine? And like, oh, it's a great Cabernet. It's like, no, 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 no. This is a Syrah Grenache from Stagecoach. Uh, and they recognize the name, uh, you know, being, uh, uh, you know, very celebrated uh, um, for uh, other varieties too. So trying to do something a little bit different than everyone else here in the Valley and, uh, and sticking with the Rhones and, uh, you know, little by little, uh, we teach people about uh, the, the, the quality that we can get uh, from these varieties, especially here in, in, in Napa. Yeah, let me ask you, uh, we all know, I mean, um, some of us knows that actually Stays Ghost was purchased by Gallo, that's right? Yes. Yep. And that's going so, to change. And that's going to change the fact because I know a lot of people did have allocation of their grape for their Cabernet Sauvignon, and they may lost or they may lose uh, the qualification of single vineyard skates coach because I believe uh, the family Gallo is going to keep that for themselves. Uh, but uh, they renew your contract to keep uh, stays coach on the label. So, um, and, uh, so, so we did not renew the contract, and in fact, it was a decision of of ours, not Gallo's. Um, you know, in 2017, they had some serious fires um, and we decided to decline the fruit in 2017. And then after harvest, they're like, oh, you know, do you still want to, uh, you know, do you want to extend your contract? I was like, ah, you know, maybe this is a good time to part ways. We just started Hyde Vineyard. Uh, you know, maybe this is a good time to, uh, to, to part ways. So 2016 was the last vintage of, uh, of the stagecoach that the stage. uh, we're doing for the kale wines. So yeah. if we can actually grab those uh, stage goats right now, especially with the 2014 that we have on the front of us, then did have the time to uh, <coughs> obviously um, uh, get uh, to uh, to settle on the glass and everything, which I believe it's, it is amazing this morning. Um, it is uh, one of the last vintage that we're going to have access to stage goats. So that's just to be sure that everybody understand what we're doing and how, how you are getting. Uh, I have a quick question on the chat box. How did you manage to uh, build this relationship with the Krupp family? So, um, uh, so uh, at the, in 2012, when I started uh, at Paul Meyer, so I, I was buying a, a little bit of fruit here and there. I was buying some Malbec. I was buying a little bit of Cabernet uh, when I was at, uh, 
uh, Tara Valentine. Uh, this was 03 to 05, or yeah, 03 to 05. Um, and uh, when I started at Paul Meyer, Paul Meyer was the single largest buyer of Cabernet uh, from Stagecoach, not in volume, but in money wise. Um, they were buying some of the most expensive Cabernet on, on the site. So, I mean, it's pretty funny what, 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 what Gallo did. I mean, you know, after, uh, you know, we got Paul Meyer 100 points and, uh, you know, uh, bringing up the, 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 the quality of Stagecoach, uh, you know, they, they bought Paul Meyer to, and then they, they, so at first they bought Stagecoach and then they bought Paul Meyer to stick all the Stagecoach in. Uh, you know, they're clearly on my, on my path there. <laughs> Anyways. Nice. Uh, but yeah, you know, a lot of those, um, contracts, you know, uh, that, that, that I had and that other people had making, you know, uh, small batch wines from Stagecoach, uh, a, a lot of that, uh, you know, Gallo is putting that into their products now, uh, wherever they may go. I'm not exactly sure exactly where it's all going, but, um, yeah, as far as the Stagecoach for Kale wines, uh, 16 will be the last vintage. Good. Let's go back to 2014, what we're testing right now. Tell us mm -hmm. what was the experience in 14, what you, uh, how do you define the vintage, uh, what was the difficulty, what was the odd, what was the, uh, the, the approach to it? 14 was a, was a quality-wise, was a fantastic vintage. Uh, 13 was unbelievable. The 13 was the best vintage I've been a part of. Um, you know, it's been 20 years now. 13 was I, I, I wouldn't have, uh, if I gave Mother Nature uh, a recipe, I would give her the 2013. Just <laughs> okay. follow that every year. Just do that for us every year. You know, no fires, no heat waves, uh, you know, a long cool season, decent crop, not too heavy. Uh, but then in 2014, we were like, oh man, you know, we're going to be let down. It's not going to be as good as 13. 14 was also fantastic. Um, and 14 was even a little bit more approachable. So a little bit richer, a little bit riper. Uh, and we also got higher yields, uh, which that generally doesn't happen, you know, when these uh, rich vintages that you actually also have a higher yield. So 14 was kind of the best of both worlds. I mean, just from a purely monetary standpoint, uh, 14 was, uh, you know, all the, all the accountants love 14 because, uh, you know, lots and lots of really, really good wine. Um, Especially right now. I mean, with the evolution, yeah. with the time in the bowl, and we're really, really shine right now. Yeah, yeah. And 14, you know, it's a little bit warmer than 13, um, but uh, no heat waves, no, you know, serious heat waves like we had this year or that we had in 2017. Uh, you know, nothing crazy like that. Uh, you know, there's some little, little spikes here and there, but you know, nothing that was going to uh, affect the quality. So, okay. uh, so yeah. is it in the 13, in the 13 and the 14, did you use the same amount of uh, Syrah? Right here on the Syrah, we have 69% Syrah, 31% yes. uh, Grenache. Then the yes. 13 was about the same? It's about the same. So, um, it, it for in general, all the stage coaches are about... 70 30 70 Syrah 30 Grenache you know plus or minus a percent this year it was you know 69 percent um you know so you know we're not labeling it uh you know uh Syrah so we're not uh, we don't need to stay within the 85 percent range this is always a blend uh and we you know we call it broken axle um because uh you know story of the vineyard uh the um story behind the name uh you know, Jan Krupp purchased a whole bunch of old mining equipment to excavate all the rocks out of the vineyard and uh, to get all the plants in the ground. And uh, when this mining equipment breaks, the excavators and the big dump trucks, uh, they break down, you know, it costs them thousands and thousands of dollars just to get them to the top of the mountain. Uh, when they break down, uh, he just leaves them there <laughs> to, to, to rust out and then, then plants vineyards around him. So literally that Syrah Grenache block is planted around a huge dump truck with a broken axle. So, uh, <laughs> okay, so that's, that's why we call it the broken that's axle. That's why the Nick stem's coming up. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Got it. Got it. Got it. That's great. That's great. So um, I, I'm, I'm really enjoying myself with this. And uh, we're going to go around the table again. I'm going to uh, have someone maybe want to, maybe a uh, lady, ladies. I would love to have a ladies on the, on the line here and uh, give us a little uh, descriptive of uh, what you find on this glass. 
and talking to us about the um, uh, the uh, Space Coach 2014. Is any of the ladies uh, want Kat. to take the lead? Kat. Uh, we have obviously. So I don't see anybody. I don't All see right, anybody. fine. I'm gonna I'm gonna call out okay. the girls on here because I'm the only girl that usually steps up. <laughs> so I'm calling out all Good the job. ladies, the goddesses. <laughs> yeah, that's right, girls. All that, right. So the right. big Do thing it. that stuck out for me on this. Um, that's was, not true. And it was so intoxicating on the finish. I mean, on the nose, that's the first thing that I, I thought that I was smelling was the violets and those purple flowers that I get a lot of times with Grenache. But then on the finish, it just lingered like, um, like a violet syrup almost. And it was intoxicating to my mind. So I'm going to tag one of the other goddesses here. Come on, girls. Yeah, do it. Do it. Step it up, sisters. <laughs> <laughs> Who's ready? Thank you, Kat, right. always. Thank you so much. I really appreciate that. Uh, just Maybe. very quickly, uh, did, you see the dif <laughs> did you see the difference between Kat about, uh, obviously, the Hyde Vineyard and the Estates Gulch? What, is, uh, what did you like the most? Uh, what, what do you think, Phil? much your palette the eye vineyard or the state goats or do you think they both represent uh the different ava in the best way that was for you cat did you get that oh hold on you're in, in mute in mute yourself for a sec sorry i my uh, my sound went off for a minute that's okay. I was uh, I was just asking you, uh, what did you think about the difference between the I can't, uh, I can't hear anything. Okay, I'm going to move. All right, it's all the connection. It's technology. We're going to move to another lady. Uh, ah, Jeffrey was next to it. It was not too far away. Okay, I get uh, Kat and Jeff on the same table. That's great. So I guess Jeffrey is going to take the lead. <laughs> is you? Are you okay, Jeff? Can you hear me? I mute see myself here. Here we go. I can hear you very well. Go ahead. Go ahead. He's on mute. Yeah. Okay. Hi, Bruno. It's Serena here, okay. Reno. Yes. Oh. Hello, Serena. Hello. Thank you so much to be part of I'll, this. I'll story. step up. Uh, let me just tell you this. I'm not used to drinking at 1030 in the morning. So I no? but you're a champ But now you're a it's champion. Beautiful. This I, I'm just uh, this is my first Zoom with you all for the Thank tasting. You. Thank you. Thank you. I was part able of it. to attend. So I appreciate that. And uh, these are lovely wines, Kale. I mean, beautiful. Thank you. Yes. And uh, the stories in the 2014, uh, you know, the, just getting in on that about the stagecoach story is very in, enticing. But the wine is so well balanced and uh, it would go great with our menu at the Stonehouse Cafe, Reno, Nevada, folks. So that's great. Yeah. Thank it's, you it's, to, uh, to be part of this event again. And I'm very happy then that you can enjoy this little moment with us. Uh, you doing okay over there? Everything is good. Well, as you know, he shut us down to 25%. So it's been very challenging. That's why we I'm need to keep drinking. Through. That's why you need to uh, stop drinking early in the morning. Yeah, I told my staff I'm going to be a little later than normal. <laughs> <laughs> very well. Thank you, still, so yeah. Thank you so much. Thank you so much to take the lead. Uh, we're going to give the world to, uh, to obviously, to Diane. She, uh, she prepared another cheese for the people in Vegas. Again, sorry about everybody else. Uh, then we didn't bring any cheese, maybe next time. But uh, Diane, you're up. Uh, please uh, tell us uh, the second cheese that the people in Vegas do have it on the front of them. And why did you choose uh, this cheese uh, in your sense, in your world, uh, with this wine? Uh, sure. So I, um, I was really blown away by the second wine. Um, I thought it was like deep and sultry and very velvety and really had um, a lot going on. Um, and for me, that screams a blue. 
Um, I, I felt like it was powerful enough, but gentle enough to withstand what I would consider a very approachable blue. So in keeping with Northern California, I went over to Point Reyes Farmstead Creamery. Their flagship blue is the original blue, which is an unpasteurized blue that's very, very creamy. But we did the other one today. We actually did Bay Blue, which is their pasteurized blue that goes through a little bit of an extra cook step, which means that it gets this lovely sort of like caramelized tone to it. Um, so you get a lovely salted caramel sort of note there. The pen Cilium Rogue 40 in the blue, which is what makes blue cheese blue, really stands out when you actually make this pairing um, and comes right forward on the palette. So this one actually highlights a bit more of the cheese, this pairing, um, but the, the wine is a perfect sort of delivery vehicle to have this really approachable sweet blue turn into a very powerful sort of salty finish. Um, and I really, I really loved what it did on the palette. Um, interestingly enough, I'm just going to mention here, if you switch the pairings, you have a completely different experience and actually not so pleasant of one because they're not paired well of the opposite way. So if you still have the cheeses in front of you, you should switch to see what happens. If you pair the stagecoach with the Humboldt Fog, you're actually going to get a little bit of like evidence of like lipolytic activity, which is the breakdown of short chain fatty acids in the cheese, which might taste a little bit bitter in the Humboldt Fog. Um, and then if you mix the 2014 Syrah with the Bay Blue, then you'll notice that the whole thing just sort of, the flavor just sort of breaks on the palate and dissipates immediately. So it's really interesting to flip the pairing and see evidence of why it doesn't work so that when you flip it back, you can be more, you know, you can scrutinize a little bit further as to why the pairing does work. Well done. Well said. I mean, it, it's Thank just you. great to have someone with such a uh, great uh, descriptive on the cheese. And uh, yes, uh, experimentation is always the best way because until you test it, you cannot just know what's going to happen. So let's uh, push our guests, our people around us to uh, share the passion and tell them then they should test a different wine, different cheese, different pairing every day and not skip to the same brand again and again and again. And that's what we bring over the small grower uh, to the table. Uh, amazing. Uh, thank you so much again, uh, Diane. You did a great job. Uh, back to uh, Mr. Kel. Uh, that was a quick question about, I believe, East. What is your philosophy of uh, East? Uh, you obviously buying different grapes from different property. Uh, what is your approach with that? So I'm, I'm trying to use um, native yeast when I can. Um, now, in 2016, uh, I used commercial yeast uh, in the Hyde, uh, Hyde Vineyard. It was my first time with the vineyard and I wanted to make sure that things were gonna yeah. be under control and make sure that, uh, uh, so I used uh, uh, William Selium uh, yeast. It's isolated at William Selium, uh, which worked out very, very well. Um, but the Stagecoach, uh, the 2014 is native, uh, native yeast. So. Um, Stagecoach, stage I found has... On the Stagecoach, are you doing uh, whole cluster or not? no, no cluster? No, not on, not on the Stagecoach. So I'm not doing any whole cluster on the Stagecoach. Uh, you know, I do, I'm doing quite a bit on the hide, but not on the Stagecoach. Um, it makes sense. I'm really quite trying strong. to uh, really uh, extract, you know, uh, really dark, dark, dark flavors. Um, and it doesn't need any help with the concentration. I mean, it's... Uh, it's inky, it's dark, it's, uh, someone said sultry, uh, those are all uh, appropriate, uh, you know, descriptors for the wine. It's always, you know, extremely concentrated and uh, intense um, uh, on its own. So no, no need for any whole cluster uh, with the stagecoach. And, you know, this was the, f the second year, or excuse me, the third year uh, with, uh, with stagecoach. So I was confident enough to use um, to use, uh, can you still hear me? Uh, it's confident enough to use uh, native yeast uh, in in 2014. Uh, that not the because I was familiar with the vineyard. So nice. Um, nice. I'm trying to use native yeast whenever I can. Although I'm not going to be taking, you know, if something is going uh, sideways, some you know, if the fermentation isn't going the way that I want it to, or I'm not getting the temperature that I'm looking for then I'll uh, intervene, but I, I, I try to intervene as little as possible. Got it, superb. Um, one of the last questions for you, buddy. Uh, we are pushing the hour. Uh, tell us how you see yourself going with this brand. How, uh, how do you want to develop? And uh, what is exactly the, uh, the journey that we're going to, uh, 
to uh, to get uh, with you guys, uh, with your wife, Ranko, and you, you're doing a lot of consulting, is what is the destiny for uh, for Kale Wines? So Kale Wines is a passion project, um, and it'll, it'll always be that way. It's owned 100% by my wife and I. We don't have any investors. Uh, you know, we're not interested in investors. Uh, we like owning... Uh, this business ourselves, you know, we have partial ownership in other businesses, but this uh, this is our passion project. It'll always be Roan, um, and it'll always be from uh, Northern California. Um, you know, uh, I've been trying to, you know, stay a little bit more local and, you know, kind of consolidating, you know, the consulting projects as well as the kale wines sourcing of fruit uh, to just Napa and Sonoma. Uh, you know, I have made wine from Mendocino uh, under the Kale Wines label before. Uh, I'm going to keep it to Napa and Sonoma. Um, it'll always be small lot. Um, you know, we're just trying to make the highest quality, most interesting Rhones uh, that we can uh, every single year. So this isn't being sold to Gallo. Don't worry. Um, <laughs> uh, I'm not sure if they would want to buy it anyways, but, they, you know, that, that's okay. They, they, they can buy all the other things we do. <laughs> exactly. Well, well done, and and keep doing what you're doing, my friend. Um, uh, another question just pop up: Are you doing um, some experimentation where you do 100% Grenache or 100% Syrah single varietal? Ooh, good question. Uh, so we also have an, another blend from Rutherford called uh, Maga Family Vineyard. It's called Heritage. That is 85% Grenache and 15% Moved. Uh, very different beast. It's planted right next to uh, Bextoffer George the Third Vineyard, so it's kind of cool. Right in the middle of uh, smack dab in the heart of uh, the Napa Valley, you know, having the bush trained uh, Grenache Moved, uh, it's pretty cool stuff. Um, you know, we make very little of that as well, but yeah, we 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 uh, we like to do uh, so. That's our Grenache based uh, blend. Uh, you know, Hyde is almost a hundred percent with Viognier. Stagecoach is seventy thirty. Uh, there might be other things uh, on the horizon um, where we'll be playing with some other uh, run varieties as well. So um, let's stay tuned. Let's stay tuned. Yeah, stay the tuned. It looks like it's just the start of a uh, beautiful, bright uh, success with the Cal Wines. Uh, very pleased to have you today. Uh, I have to say then the Maga was a good pick. And, you know, we represent Scarlet Wine. Uh, it is from yeah. the Maga Vineyard. This is actually the owner of Maga. Then do the yes. wine with us. We love the vineyard, and and uh, Smith, the uh, the winemaker, uh, is a great guy as well. I know you know each other. So um, again, uh, Carl, I really uh, really appreciate that you give us the tour today. The the view is great. You tell us about uh, uh, the vineyard, and you uh, obviously were here with us. We will keep continue to support you. We'll keep continue to uh, talk about Kale, but also Kale wines. I want to thank also your uh, beautiful uh, lady, your wife, uh, Ranko, that really helped us to, uh, to put all that together. Thank you again for the support. Uh, you know what I said, keep doing what you're doing, keep it better, keep it good. Um, we need a winemaker like you with the passion, making some uh, not easy project. You don't sell cab. We are doing run varietal. We know it's challenging, but we took the challenge because the quality of the wine and obviously because you, you're human being, then, then you are. Uh, thank you for the support for all these years. And we will keep pushing in your direction, my friend. Well, thank you, Bruno. And thank you so much for having me on. And uh, I know these are tough times. And uh, uh, thank you uh, uh, to, to uh, Caroline as well, your better half. Um, you know, uh, too, uh, too small. Uh, family businesses, uh, your business and my business. So uh, we got to support each other. So um, I, I, we, we appreciate it. Um, and uh, yeah, more to come. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Kel. I really appreciate that. So everyone, thank you very much to be part of the uh, Hillside Wine and Spirit and Regency Wine Nevada, our, uh, special uh, special uh, Zoom trade. It was our special guest, Kel Anderson, amazing raising star winemaker in Napa and Sonoma. Um, in a minute, I will shut down this uh, little recording session. I will give you access to those uh, allocation wines. And of course, with Scale and Ranko and uh, us at Regency Hillside, we put a special, special deal for you guys that you're online today and spend an hour with us. So uh, stay tuned for a minute. Thank you again. Thank you very much. And I will see you uh, soon, soon, soon for the next one.